that's Jupiter. Uh, the camera is actually, actually always draws at zero, zero. Um, so now we're moving pretty fast, so you should be able to see the transition here as we get to Jupiter. So it's still drawing as a sprite, um, and we draw that as sort of instance meshes, so we can draw lots of sprites. You can see actually, well, you probably can't because it'll be a compression artifact, but there's a little flashing light of probably Nep Neptune or something as well. Um, so as we get close, I think it probably already has transitioned to a sphere. Yeah, so you might just see in the distance there it's transitioned to a sphere. Um, and as we start to get closer, you can start to see the Jovian moons. I'm going to slow, try slow down a little bit. And this is Jupiter. Oh, um, did I set the sim speed really high? No, I don't think I did. Um, so you can see our Jovian moons here and Jupiter and stuff like that. Um, most of these probably, we, we just have some te test texture data in, so there's nothing, you know, particularly crazy. Uh, I think we've got the height map data really high on this, so that's just a little... Uh, 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 again, we're just sort of testing with data at the moment, um, so I might just slow down a little bit, but this is probably a good... You know, we just kind of got it sort of crazy. But just because I wanted to show you that, that idea of seamlessness and stuff like that, um, that, you know, we can really just sort of boost around with no issues um, at all. Uh, where's Jupiter? I've lost Jupiter. Uh, the stars were working, but they're, uh, they broke when we updated the latest um, uh, brutal stuff. So it can make uh, references finding a little bit difficult. Uh, oh, there's Jupiter. It's behind the shadow. Yeah, so we're using just a real... In fact, I think we're at a point now where um, we want to... We're going to get some of the artists to start making just some sample stuff. Um, uh, let's go to the moon. So this is what I was sort of doing in that uh, video. Uh, but this is actually a good chance probably for me to show off how the billboarded mesh stuff works. Um, so if I turn on wireframe mode, you can see basically, actually it's probably really hard to see, but you can see as I get closer, we're actually switching out uh, mesh lots. Um, and in fact, the, the mesh data, we have so much mesh available to us that um, I'm just going to slow my speed right down here. Um, that even at real um, real levels, we have um, stacks of mesh data available um, if we want to use it um, for essentially zero cost. So you can see at the moment I'm running at a frame rate of around a thousand. Um, uh, and that's still while drawing all these lines as well, actually. Um, probably with while remembering. Um, but yeah, so this sort of demonstrates off, uh, you know, that really unique approach to, to rendering and how it works. So you can see actually the height map data is kind of leading us down at this point. We've actually got more um, more available than we really need. Oh, I was colliding with the the planet there at the moment. The camera has a rudimentary collider on it. You see Earth through the terrain there. So I've got it on wireframe mode. But probably, so you can see as I pull back from here, it will start um, using a different uh, LOD layer. Um, and that is fully customizable. So that's fully moddable. Um, yeah. Um, as it uh, moves out. Um, yeah, it's a little hard to see probably uh, in it, but hopefully this shows. I'm going to turn off billboarding, and this will show a bit better how that um, billboarded lotting system works. Um, so I think, yeah, so you can see basically as we get closer to the planet, um, we're actually switching to a, uh, a billboarded sphere 
that puts more and more detail actually closer to the surface where you would be. Um, and that's kind of for free. So at the start of the game, we... Um, it's a shame I can't really stream it because I was trying to stream my screen, but it was breaking. But I'll, I'll, I'll try and, after I've done a bit of a demo here, I'll actually go through and show the... Um, uh, what is it? The XML. But yeah, basically we can define these sphere, uh, billboard spheres in XML. So someone making RSS, for example, can they'll need to go in and make much bigger meshes. These these meshes that we're using probably max I th out at about 1.5 million polys, which sounds like quite a lot, and it is. Um, but realistically, when we're drawing this kind of mesh, that's not uh, too too big too big a deal really because uh, you're not normally that many close to a lot of these bodies but yeah um, with bill winning turns off you can you can see how um, a better representation of how the game how we're choosing and again that's just in data so models can change that completely how we are choosing to switch between um, different meshes uh, so, you know, as you get closer, there's less of a chance of us seeing over the, over the horizon. So we're starting to put that mesh detail more and more. So you can see how those subdivisions work um, uh, in, in there, I guess. Um, I mean, we can do proper explanations of some of this stuff later on. Um, I know what's going on here. I think that's a bug. Actually, that's clearly a bug. Probably in my data. See how I'm probably over subdividing something there. That's definitely indicative of, of a problem in my data. So I'm probably like over overdoing it. So you can see when billboarding's turned on, this is actually really complicated. We to to avoid you seeing too much swimming. Um, we have to basically, um, you know, and, and the idea is you shouldn't notice it. I've got wireframe turned on, but if I turn wireframe off, the idea is you won't really notice uh, us moving between those things. And I know it, it feels like I'm laboring this point, but it's it's actually really important. We felt it, it was the most important thing in terms of performance was the terrain, particularly when it comes to building bases and stuff like that. Um, I, I really strongly believe we don't want popping in and out of terrain and a whole bunch of problems. We are actually playing with the triplanar shader at the moment, so it's pretty, um, yeah. Uh, I might... Um should see a lot more mesh data in there and again with no impact on frame rate I think we're at about two milliseconds which is about 500 frames a second um, and yet we still have you know there's a lot of mesh detail there more than you could put in a um, in a height texture really you can see that there's just a lot of detail there um, yeah yeah we were running at one millisecond which is uh, you know like 800 frames a second so the earth's over there the earth has a pretty crappy height map on it at the moment um we did actually have a really cool showcase that shows off our version of atmospheric scattering um but it broke when we updated the renderer um but black rack has, has started so we should be able to um, show off something uh, i'm just going to zoom over here then i will actually have to stop the stream briefly because um I'm supposed to be giving the company an update, and um, they probably deserve to know what's going on um, without having to watch the stream. So, oh, actually, you can see there where we popped. Um, we'll, we'll increase the distance, but you can see there we popped between using a billboarded sphere and using a traditional sphere. Um, and again, this is using crappy data uh, at the moment. But uh, at least it gives you that idea of um, of scale. We just need to go in and actually put in proper data, but it just gives you that idea that it's not all fake and whatever. Uh, but I'll be back in a moment. Um, 